Aziz Hazretlerinin Aziz Pak Münevver Mutahar Ruh Şeriflerine salavat şerifi kesirenlerin ahir ve akıbetleri hayır ola. Ales ve Aziz Ahiret Evladı Resul'e sahab gidin efendilerimizin sahir enbiyay zemmer Resulü Fiyan Hazretlerinin Erva Şeriflerine Pirimiz Bilal Habeşur Radiyallahu Anh Efendimizin Şeyhimiz Sahibü Sevşi Abdülkerim El Kıbrıs El Rabbani Hazretlerinin ve alel husus bu caminin banisi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman mezin kaymlarının ve kahve ehli imanın ervahi için Allah rızası için el Fatiha Yavuzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim İnnallâhe ve melâikete ve yüsallun alen nebi Ya İyvellezîn amenu sallu aleyhi ve sellimu teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala ve seyyidina Muhammed Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Hayy aleyhissalâm Hayy aleyhissalâm Hayy aleyhissalâm Hayy aleyhissalâm Allah-u Ekber Allah Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina muhammedin ve la alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Nehmedullah ta'ala ve nastafiru eşhedü an la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Eşhedü anna seyyidina muhammedin ve abduhu, habibuhu ve resuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvacihi. Mesabi tabi khulafi rahidin mahidin min ba'di ve zirmati ala tahkik. خسم تعلم تي خلف رسول الله تحقيق عمر المؤمنين حضرات ابو بكر وعمر عثمان وعلي ولا بك ثابت تبين رضا الله تعالى عليه مجمعين يا ايها المؤمن الحاضرون اتق الله تعالى وتئن الله هم الذين اتقوا الذين هم محسنون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Allah created the heavens and earth with truth. He wraps the night over the day and wraps the day over the night and has subjected the sun and the moon to give service. Each one follows a course for a time appointed. Is he not the exalted in power? He who forgives again and again. He created you from one being, then from that he made its mate. And he produced for you eight head of cattle in pairs. He makes you in the wombs of your in stages, one after another, in three veils of darkness. Such is Allah, your Lord and cherisher. To him belongs all dominion. There is no ilah but he. How then are you turned away? If you reject Allah, truly Allah has no need of you. But he does not like thanklessness from his servants. If you are grateful, he is pleased with you. No barrier of burdens will bear the burden of another. In the end, to your Lord is your return, when he will tell you the truth of all what you did in this life. For he knows well that is in men's hearts. May the most beautiful peace and most complete blessings be upon our master, Sayyidina Muhammad who said, I am the beloved of Allah and I'm not boasting and I'm the carrier of the banner of praise on the day of judgment and I'm not boasting and I'm the first intercessor and the first to have intercession accepted from him on the day of judgment and I'm not boasting. And I'm the first to shake the rings on the gates of paradise. And so Allah will open it for me and admit me inside. 
and I am the most noble among the first ones and the last ones, and I'm not boasting. May peace and blessings be upon him and his noble family and his blessed companions, especially upon the Fakhul Afair Rashidin, Hazrat Obaka Siddiq, Hazrat Omar Farooq, Hazrat Osman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, no believers. Believers must be careful. Today is the first Juma of the month of Safar. The month that the curses rain down from the heavens on the heads of disobedient mankind. Sultan al Awliya, Shem Allah, Muhammad. Safar has whips that will put the whole world in order. The whips are punishing mankind. Those who believe in Allah, who keep His orders, who love and obey the Holy Prophet ﷺ, who love and obey His inheritors, those ones are not going to get cursed in Safar, inshallah. The ones that Allah is pleased with, they are not going to be whipped in Safar. The whipping of today, the ignorant man thinks that he is brave. This is the situation of today's mankind. They walk boldly and arrogantly on the face of There is nothing but destruction for a heart that is empty from the fear of Allah. Today the world became destroyed because fear of Allah left the world. Fear of Allah left and it has been replaced with arrogance and pride in front of Allah. And foolish Muslims are becoming worse than Christians when they say Allah is love. Allah is Rahman and Rahim. Allah will not judge you. Allah will not punish you. He is the most forgiving, forgetting that Allah is also the enforcer. Allah is also Jalal and Jabbar and Kahar. Because they have left the love of Allah. The one who loves Allah will fear Him. And the one who fears Allah will love Him. That arrogance and that pride, not caring for anything, it is pulling punishment from anger and anger non-stop to this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make it a secret about what makes him angry and what pulls his punishment. He is saying in Surah Al-Hajj, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim If they deny you, Ya Muhammad, the same way the people of Nuh and the tribes of Ad and Samud before you denied our messengers, and so did the people of Ibrahim and the people of Lut and the inhabitants of Madian. And Musa was rejected in the same way. So I lengthened the enjoyment for the disbelievers. And only after that did I punish them. But how terrible was my rejection of them. How many cities have we destroyed while they were sinful so that it lies to this day in ruins and how many wells are abandoned and neglected and how many castles high and well built have they not traveled to the land so that their hearts may learn wisdom and their ears may learn to hear truly it is not the eyes that are blind but the hearts that are in their chests yet they ask you to speed up the punishment, but Allah will not fail in His promise. Verily, a day in the sight of your Lord is like a thousand years of your counting. And how many a city did I prolong its enjoyment while it was committing wrong? Then I seized it. And to me is the return. Sadaqallah Azim. This is enough. This should make those who believe in Allah in the last days to have fear in our hearts. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making very clear and plain the reason that He punishes people. He punishes them when they reject their messenger. They punish them. He punishes them when the message that is brought by the messenger is rejected. Kaumi Nuh, the people of Nuh, the Ad Samud, the people of Ibrahim, salam, the Kaum of Lut, salam, the Ashab al Madian, the Kaum of Musa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lists them all. And He's saying, Go look to them. 
Go look for the people of Nuh. Go look for the Ad. Go look for the Samud. Go and look. They have disappeared and they have been erased from the face of the earth. Their houses and their palaces and their wells, which they took so much pride in. Their castles and their technology, they are left abandoned and overturned. Some of them you cannot even find at all in existence because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them to non-existence. Why? Because they disobeyed his messengers. Holy Prophet wasalam, did not come to one city. He did not come to one tribe. He came to the whole of mankind. He is the prophet of all mankind. No prophet before him was sent to all mankind. And there is no prophet after him. The Khatimul Nabin is the, is the nation of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Rejecting him, they will raise their voices and say, No, we love the Prophet. Aren't we Muslims? Don't we read the Quran? Don't we pray? You can say you're a Muslim. You can make Khatim of the Quran every day. You can pray not five times a day, 100 times a day. But this Ummat, this Ummat, we have rejected the Holy Prophet. How is that? Holy Prophet said, Whoever obeys me, obeys Allah. Whoever disobeys me, disobeys Allah. And whoever obeys the Khalifa, obeys me. And whoever disobeys him, disobeys me. It is recorded in the Sahih al-Bukhari. Muslims, mankind, are we obeying the Khalifa? Or have we dishonored ourselves so much that we do not even have a Khalifa anymore? Did we disgrace ourselves so much that we remove the Sultan from his throne so that now we are unprotected and unguarded and stripped of our nobility, stripped of our humanity, stripped of our honor. The Holy Prophet says, The Sultan is the shadow of Allah on earth. Whoever honors the Sultan, Allah will honor that person. And whoever hates the Sultan, Allah will hate that person. Let's be sincere. Is the Ummah today honoring the inheritor of the Holy Prophet did they show love and respect to the Khalifa? Or are they just showing hatred? The Muslims removed the Khalifa. 100 years ago, they said to Ulu Hakan, Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan, Get out. We don't want you. The Shaykhul Islam signed a fatwa endorsing the removal of Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan. The Muslims asked for it. The Muslims wanted it. East, west, north and south. And the Muslims got it. Since that time, non-stop bloodshed and war and slaughter has been coming first to the Muslims and then to the Ummati Muhammad. As our Shaykh Saibul Sayyid is saying, the Khalifa moved from the chair and the Khalifa is not ruling now. So no more blessing is coming. Because no more blessing is coming, now all wrong things are opening, coming to the surface. Before the Khalifa was there, more blessings were reigning and in the east, west and everywhere, there was proper ruling. As I said again, you don't have to become an awliya to understand. The one biggest mistake that the Muslim people today have is that they don't know their history. First, you have to check the history, open the pages back a little bit, turn it back, look where the trouble started and since then, if the trouble stopped, when did it start? Right after Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan, the trouble started everywhere in the world, non-stop. 24 hours a day. Holy Prophet is saying, the blood is going to move like a river on earth. Is it happening today or not? It is happening. What does the Hilafat represent? It represents the Holy Prophet It represents that we are holding on tightly to the Juba of the Holy Prophet that we want to continue to follow his sunnah, that we want to keep on doing his work in the world. The Khilafat is representing the sunnah. When we reject the Khalifa, in reality we're rejecting the Prophet, we're rejecting his way, his lifestyle. The Khilafat represents the rope of Allah, 
It represents the firmest handhold. It represents a link between Allah and His servants. It is the shadow of Allah on earth. And when it is removed, we are exposed to the heat and the fire of the curses and punishment. We did not approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through obedience, through submission, through love. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making us wake up through other means. We disobey and we say we will not submit. We will not love you. We will not love your prophet. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making us to wake up with different means. The great Shazili Shaykh, Hazrati Ibn Atayla al-Iskandari, Qadis Lassir is saying, whoever is not drawn to Allah through his love is dragged to him through chains of hardship. Loving Allah is very far away. Muslims completely forgot Allah and His commands. That is why we are in this situation. Now the Muslim world split into more than 50 countries. Look to the leaders of those countries and say, we should bring the Hilafat back. We should at least all gather in the masjid, in the jami, in Juma, and make a dua saying, Ya Rabbi, please forgive us. Please bring back the Hilafat. Some of the Muslim leaders will definitely execute you if you make that dua in the masjid. Some will put you in prison, but no Muslim leader, not even one today, will raise his hands and say, Amin, to that dua. Not even one. Because they know that with the Khalifa and the Khilafat comes the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today's Muslim kings and presidents and prime ministers, they know in their hearts that some way, somehow, they are part of this ruling system of Dajjal. Part of the ruling system of Shaitan, not the kingdom of Rahman. They are fitting into what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim That there are men who take others besides Allah as equal to Allah. They love them as they should love Allah. But those of faith are overflowing with the love of Allah. Sadaqallahu lazim The fake rulers today, the zalims of today, they have made themselves and their ruling and their power and their ideologies as partners to Allah making it obligation for the people that they rule to love them and only them before religion, before anything else and they will sacrifice anything from it, for it but the sultans, the khalifas those are the ones overflowing with the love of Allah when we reject them we reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we abandon our khalifa this is the reality and the truth it is a difficult truth, but the Holy Prophet said, Say the truth, even if it is bitter. The question is, now what can we do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking that question in the Holy Quran, saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim So where are you going? Where are we going? So many today don't care about where we are going or what we should do. They are wandering around in a drunken state. And today's scholars and so-called sheikhs who should be waking people up, they're making people more drunk. They're saying, don't worry about the situation of the ummah. Don't worry about our history. Don't worry about Hilafat. Worry about increasing your knowledge. Think about your high stations and your wilayat. Don't think about haq and batil. Just think about yourself. This is the opposite of what Ihsan commands us towards. Hazrat ibn Atayillah is saying, your being on the, outs on the lookout for the wrong things, hidden inside of you, if you are looking out for the wrong things hidden inside of you, it is better than you looking for the invisible realities that are veiled from you. The biggest wrong inside of us today it is that we lost our Hilafat. We have to learn how to bring it back. We have to learn to follow it again. We have to learn those. We have to learn and to follow those who are connected to that Khilafat. Today, in an effort to bring honor back to Islam, people are running after the ones who had a share in bringing down the Khilafat. They are running after the descendants of the Kharijis 
who butchered the Ahlus Sunnah Wal Jama'ah in the Hijaz and all over the world. They are running after the modernists who tried to destroy Islam from the inside by taking away belief in the Holy Prophet They are running after presidents and prime ministers who trace their power to the removal of the Khilafat. If we want to learn how to bring back honor to Islam, we should learn from those who still have a connection to the Khalifa. We should learn from those who are still the inheritors of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, the face of the earth. We should learn from those who are living and dying and sacrifice are for Allah, Lord of the worlds. Our Shaykh and Grand Shaykh are such men of Allah. Our Shaykh is a grandson of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Our Shaykh is a grandson of the friends of Allah. Our Shaykh is an Ottoman, son of an Ottoman, descended from the Sultans. And he's teaching us how to live in these days, saying, Shaitan is running top speed. But the awliya Allah, they are not moving yet. They are sitting and waiting. When the order comes, one, two, three, the kingdom of shaitan that they built is going to come down. The humans built it. The humans work for that kingdom. Everyone who works for that kingdom is going to pay the price for it. Time is coming to pay the price. The door is still open for everyone to say astaghfirullah and to turn around, still open. No matter what the person did, it's still open. The door of forgiveness is still open to say astaghfirullah. Turn your way. Ask forgiveness for what you have done wrong and it will be taken away. Holy Prophet is saying, in that time, in the Ahir Zaman, walking in the streets may become very difficult for you. Then they said, what should we do, Ya Rasulullah? He said, pull yourselves into your houses become small groups and stay together. And the Sahabi Kiram said, Ya Rasulullah, what should we do if they enter into our houses too? If they come to damage us, to kill us and to do something wrong to us, what should we do? Holy Prophet said, instead of being a killer, become a martyr. Look and understand the difficulties. He is saying, if they enter into your house and they are ready to shoot you down, they are ready to kill you. And if the takbir of Mahdi salam is not given, if the Khalifa is not declaring the war against unbelief, you should not do anything. He said, be like the children of Adam, that one killed the other one. One became a killer, Habil. Qabil became the killer and the other one became a martyr, Habil. Be like those ones. So this is Islam, and you should be proud of it. There is nothing to be proud of yourselves. There is nothing to hold about yourselves to say, I am proud and I am superior. But you should be proud of Islam. And if anyone is coming in front of you, then you should be able to say, yes, I am a Muslim. Yes, I am holding on to this, and yes, this, and yes, that. Don't be shaking like chickens. If you're going to shake like chickens, then you have no place with me. You must go to other shaykhs. You must go to other Imams who are shaking. I have no fear from anything. We have no fear except Allah's fear. We are holding Islam high and we are going to hold it high. If you are in it, then you must hold it high. Oh believers, live for Islam. Be proud of your Islam. Stand up for Haq, at least inside of your own heart. Hold Islam high. Follow the Sunnah of the Rasul. Follow one of his inheritors and never let go. That is the way of safety. That is the path to success. Amen. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Lazim alazim. La ilaha illa wa hayya kareem wa tubu la ilaha illa wa hayya kareem wa tubu la ilaha illa wa hayya kareem wa tubu la ilaha illa wa hayya kareem wa tubu la ilaha illa wa hayya kareem wa tubu